I gradually came to disbelieve in Christianity as a divine revelation. I can indeed hardly see how anyone ought to wish Christianity to be true, for if so, the plain language of the text seems to show that the men who do not believe, and this would include my father, brother, and almost all my best friends, will be everlastingly punished. And this is a damnable doctrine. If I have a wish to live 30 years, it is that I may see the foot of science on the necks of her enemies. One of evolution's greatest merits in my eyes is the fact that it occupies a position of complete and irreconcilable antagonism to that vigorous and consistent enemy of the highest intellectual, moral, and social life of mankind, the Catholic Church. By next Friday evening, they will all be convinced that they are monkeys. Truth matters, and lies have consequences. When natural science is forced to somehow explain supernatural origins, we end up with false and deceptive claims that fail to withstand scrutiny and which damage the integrity of authentic natural science. The Catholic faith is fading because it is being suppressed under the influence of neo-modernism. And yet few in the church can see it because the underlying Cartesian Darwinian narrative is so widely embraced by so-called Catholic intellectuals. The best way to evaluate evolutionary claims is to go beyond the high school or college biology textbooks, as well as other works written for popular consumption, and to directly and critically evaluate the evidence for and against biological and cosmic evolution that's contained in the scientific literature. This is the approach taken in this series and I believe that the results will astound many viewers who will see that while the scientific journals are completely committed to evolution and naturalism, the journals do not target the general public and are more forthcoming about the massive shortcomings of evolutionary and naturalistic claims. If your faith in evolution is so great that you refuse to even consider whether the claims are supported in the scientific literature, then I pray that you have felt a growing discomfort with such a position and are at least open to the possibility that, along with a great many other fellow Catholics, you have been deceived. Viewers should understand that if the naturalistic account of origins is true, it would mean that God somehow allowed the apostles, the great saints, the church fathers and doctors, approved mystics and the magisterium to err in their understanding and teaching on origins for 19 centuries, and that he finally allowed the truth about biological and cosmic origins to be brought to light by unbelieving evolutionists and philosophers, many of whom openly declared their hatred for God and the Church. While many Catholics have taken such a position, we will see that from a scientific perspective, there is no reason to have abandoned the traditional teaching on origins. What are mankind's origins? How did the universe and all living things come into being? Do theories of cosmic and biological evolution provide the answer? Or does the evidence support the view that chapters 1 and 2 of the book of Genesis describe historical, supernatural creation events that exclude evolutionary processes? Does it really matter as long as everything is attributed to God? How do we find the truth? Few questions generate as much controversy even among faithful Catholics. 
Perhaps this is why many Catholic educators, apologists, and clergy avoid questions about origins. Others simply assume that evolution theory is beyond question and view it as a first principle to which everything else must conform, based on assurances from evolutionary biologists in classroom textbooks. This assumption, in turn, demands the rejection of the traditional view of creation taught by the Church for 19 centuries, 